My world is a complete mess. And that's not just because of all of the oxidizing copper all over the place, but it's also because of some changes that happened with Minecraft 1.19. And that's starting right here in my storage room. This storage room was awesome. It was the bee's knees, as some would say. But uh, as of 1.19, it gets stuck. And by stuck, I mean it completely breaks and doesn't end up sorting all of my items out like I need it to. So here fairly soon, we're gonna have to completely reconstruct our storage room from the ground up, which I'm not really looking forward to, to be honest with you, but I have other issues with my world. You see these things? These Nautilus shells here? Do you know how much of a pain they are to get? I know, I know exactly how much of a pain they are to get because I had to go out thousands and thousands of blocks looking for drowned fortress things, the drowned ruins underwater, in order to get eight of these things. But hey, now we can finally make ourselves a conduit, which is going to allow us to do a lot of underwater work around our port. Yeah, yeah, you're asking yourself, well, well, how is this an issue? Well, because I've had to do so much exploring in my world that my world file size is up to eight gigabytes. <laughs> That's kind of insane for a single Minecraft world. I understand we have a lot built and stuff, but a lot of exploring has been done in this world, and uh, we're probably gonna have to do some pruning at some point. Now, in the face of all of that mildly inconvenient news, I also have some pretty good news. I found myself some shader settings and a texture pack that I really, really like. And I kind of want to know what you guys feel about it, because I feel like it makes the game look a lot brighter and cheerier. Even as the sun is going down here, it just feels better, in my opinion. Like, this is really, really beautiful. So I think I'm going to keep using them for the rest of today's episode, at least. And you guys let me know what you think. Do you guys like this texture pack, shader pack combo? Because to me... I could continue playing like this. 100% I could continue playing like this because I think that it makes everything just look absolutely gorgeous. Let's go and check out the Guardian Island as well because I think that really, really pops with this texture pack combo. This is, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below, but we have some work to do today. So today officially marks episode number 20 which I personally think is a pretty big deal. And I know that technically episode number 50 is supposed to be your big world tour episode, but uh, to be honest, it's been a while since we've seen this world, so I think that a very short world tour may be in order. We're still going to do some stuff today, but I just want to give you guys a quick reminder of everything that we've worked on in this world. And I think that there is no better place to start than our Guardian Island. Shipwreck Island, as we call it. And this is where we have an ocean monument underneath the water, and we built this fake facade of an island up here on the surface. And if we actually go into the interior of this island, you'll see that not only is it gorgeous, but it also has a Guardian farm underneath it and you can actually hear it it's very very loud but inside of here is where we get all of the goodies from our guardians our prismarine our crystals our fish our ink sacks because this also works to get some of those guys so very very cool farm and i think that the whole facade of it is really what makes it so so awesome and the next thing in our kingdom that you're going to notice is the massive lighthouse. And this is an old corrupted lighthouse from the old times. Once again, remember, our kingdom actually has a theme with these crystals. And if you find these crystals underneath the ground and you touch them, your intentions show in the crystal. So if you want power, that crystal is going to turn red. But if you want prosperity and diplomacy, then that crystal is going to turn blue. And this lighthouse is basically ticked off because our kingdom has turned away from the old ways of power and war and it's turned into more of a diplomatic kingdom. So this lighthouse, 
Yeah, it's not very happy. And then the kingdom itself. The kingdom gates that are absolutely massive. And this was one of our first major builds that we did for the kingdom. A nice gatehouse that will let the ships in and out. And yes, the ship is actually just short enough to fit through this gate if the gate is all the way up. So the way that I plan this out is that this gate is coming back down. Like it just let this ship through and it's, you know, a quarter of the way closing behind the ship. So it is actually tall enough to fit. So <laughs> we get that question quite a lot, but we have quite a lot of ships around here. A lot of variety of ships, I might add. Hello, kitty cat. How are you doing? I forgot what I forgot what I named you, to be honest with you. Actually, I think I asked for names in the comments, and then then we never did it. But anyway, as I was saying, the port here has a multitude of types of ships, from small to large, all filling in the docks here. And honestly, it's pretty cool having a bunch of different types of ship, whether it be diplomatic or large trade ships bringing in goods. It really helps to make the port feel a lot more alive by just having a couple of different types of ship filling out this area. Now, if we go ahead and head up this hill here, we will come to our very first storage building. And this is for the traders to store their goods in that they can't bring to market. A lot of the times they're going to bring in extra stock that they'll have to come back and bring to the market later on. Over here to the far right, we have the inn for whoever's coming into port. They have a place to stay. We're just giving a quick flyby of all of these areas just so that we're not taking up the entire episode, by the way. Around back, we have ourselves a beautiful stable. We have ourselves some nice townhomes for people to stay in and actually work at the port. And then we have some defensive structures around the port every now and then. Over to our right, we have a barracks that is meant for our guards of the port. And to our left, this is the backside of that storage building where I just made a nice little balcony so that it fits into this courtyard quite nicely. Moving on, we have a, another storage building over here to our right that is absolutely beautiful. I really like how this building and our gatehouse building entering into the kingdom really works together. This is one of my favorite views in the entire world, and I, I just love it. I love how they come together, but this is the gatehouse. This is where carts and people will be checked before they enter into the kingdom, and there's going to be some guard posts and things on either side to make sure that these guys are paying their taxes and things when they come into the kingdom itself. And then over to our left, we have ourselves more defensive towers and a nice, beautiful viewpoint looking out over the port itself. Over to our right, we have a building that our ship building people are going to live in. We actually built this in the last episode. And to our left, we have the actual ship building docks. This is a dry dock where you can either build a brand new ship or bring up repaired ships. So if we go ahead and head, actually, we don't have a door on that side. Let's go down here. Bloop. If we go ahead and head this way, you can see we have some large cranes that can take goods off of ships and put them over onto the dock area until, you know, the ship is repaired and able to carry the goods itself again. In the background here, we have another barracks and a tower along with a bridge, and that is our our villager transport line. We have a villager breeding area stuck inside this mountain over here. And in order to bring them over to our kingdom, we have a rail track that goes across that bridge and into this mountain where our villager trading hall is. And the last major build that we have done for this area is this castle-y structure. And this is actually a bank. And this bank is obviously where you saw at the beginning of the episode, we have our storage room stuck in the back, back here. And once again, uh, we're gonna have to fix this later. And then the very last build for this area is not a major build, but it is an important build. This was our very first build of the entire world. This was our starter house, and now it's mostly just a horse house. <laughs> it keeps Jet over here and our two skeletal horses tied up, and the nether portal is underneath it, and that's 
That's basically all this little guy is used for these days. Coming into the valley, and we do have one build in here, and that is our skeleton farm. And I wanted this to look like a ruins, and I think I knocked it out of the park, if I do say so myself. And if we come down here, this is where our skeleton spawner is, and this is where we get all of our bone meal from the world, just sitting here, AFK, and then come down here and kill them with looting. And heading back out of the valley, we do have one more area that is pretty far along in development, and that is our farmlands. Every single kingdom needs a good farmlands, and ours is no exception. It is absolutely beautiful in here. From our apiary in the back where we do all of our bee work to our little village townhomes in here, they're just absolutely beautiful gorgeous this entire area is so beautiful if you just get a little spot up here like this you can see just how pretty it is as the sun is setting so we do have a lot of projects that are currently in progress but i hope this was a quick overview of where we are with the world a quick reminder since it has been a little while since we've worked here and now it's time to get to work in today's episode so, what are we going to be working on today? Well, as mentioned in the last episode, I want to make a trading guild. And what is a trading guild, you might be asking? Well, my idea for this is it's a place for people to come and maybe make investments. Say, a couple of people want to get together and make a brand new tavern or something like that. They could come and invest in that tavern and then, you know, get their stock options or dividends or whatever they had back in the old days in order to get their money back. Places to invest, get business people together and work out deals. And maybe if you're a part of the trading guild, you'll also get discounts on certain market stalls or something like that. So the normal price is one gold, but the guild price is one copper, something like that. So here is our layout, and it looks a little bit intense, but that's because we're going to have a lot of different heights and towers that are going to be added to the area. I figure a trading hall is going to have a lot of money, so having a pretty big build actually makes sense. You know, when I planned this build out, it definitely felt a lot smaller. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, this thing's, this thing's gonna be giant. That's okay. That's totally okay. I expected a trading guild to have a lot of money for a big, big building, right? That makes sense. Also, can I just say with the shader and texture pack new thing that I got going on here, the rain is a whole lot less annoying. <laughs> it actually looks, uh, kind of relaxing. Wow. I never thought I'd say that about Minecraft rain, to be honest with you, but kind of feel at peace. So as per my usual method of building, we're going to start with the roofs first, and then we will move on to the walls and filling in with decor. But I always find this to be the easiest way to actually build in Minecraft is start with roofs and then move on to your walls and so on and so forth. It just makes the whole process a whole lot easier once you know exactly how your roofs are going to connect. And that should now be all of the outlines for the roof in. And as you can see, there's a lot of angles that are happening here for this build. And I think that that's going to play to our advantage. That means that we're going to be able to get a lot of different shapes out of this build that's going to look pretty good together, I think. So the next thing that I want to do is actually fill in these roof lines. And I'm going to do a trick like I did on the last build where I did a gradient. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time our gradient has changed and we're going to use a cyan terracotta toward the bottom, a cobbled deep slate to transition into some warped wood. And this is the warped wood where it's the same bark or stripped bark texture on every side. And then we also are going to have prismarine bricks as our top kind of highlight piece like we did up here with the normal copper blocks. We're going to use this as our highlight. So that is the plan here at least. Let's go ahead and let's get in all of these roofs. 
Yep, I think that gradient came out looking fantastic. And it really goes along with the theme that we're going for in the kingdom. Again, the red is supposed to be power and war, and blue is supposed to be prosperity, trade, diplomacy, things like that. And what better for a trading guild than a blue roof, right? <laughs> I think that it works out really well. Still has those darker tones, but is obviously marked as part of being the blue side or the good side of this kingdom. I really like it. Now we have all of the walls and detailing to get in, but, you know, we got our layout now. It's just time to, to fill it in, make this thing really come to life. And there we go. Absolutely beautiful. As the sun is rising this morning, our trading guild is now complete. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit worried about it because I am using a few new building techniques in this build. Specifically, these cross braces and the windows. So... As you sometimes see on old medieval style builds, especially on the ones that have that, you know, white stucco look to them, sometimes they will have those cross braces to them. And I decided to add in some dark oak planks to try and mimic that look. And I did it here at the front and I also did it over here toward the sides. And I actually kind of like it. I think that from far away, it looks really good. And from close up, it's adequate. It's not bad. Uh, but overall, I really like how the build came out. I'm kind of torn on whether I want to add an actual entrance onto this side because it does feel a little bit empty. As you come up this hill and this is your viewpoint, it almost feels like there definitely should be an entrance here. So I may add that here in the future. Just kind of depends how the rest of this area ends up panning out. But another thing that I added that I'm not entirely sure how I feel about, and I say that, I actually really like it. I actually really like it. I'm just not so sure how you guys are going to like it. I added in redstone lamps that are powered. And the reason that I did that is it makes the town feel a little bit more alive. All you do is you put a lever on the back and this makes it look like the lights are on. The lights are on inside of the tavern. And while we don't have any interior at all, it kind of fakes it in a way. It fakes to where it looks like we have an interior. It looks like this house is busy and bustling inside. And honestly, I like it. I like that illusion that that gives. Another thing that I really like about this build is the addition of the tower. As you come through our gatehouse here, you can see this adds a lot of height and it really helps to blend this level to the second level very well because it is once again overhanging the two areas and I just like it. I think that that is very fitting and I'm actually missing some lamps. <laughs> Hold on, just a little bit of this and a little that and... Perfect, there we go. <laughs> I don't know how I missed those whenever I did my check around the build, but like I said, this connecting to both the upper and lower level makes the area feel more complete. Just like we did with this bunkhouse here that is connecting the upper and lower levels by this stairwell. It just makes the whole thing feel like one unit. But overall, I like how this build came out. It still needs some decor and things in this area, but I really wanna get the entire area in before we start detailing around these builds. I think that this whole area needs to flow together, so we're gonna put off doing some more of the smaller decor until later on. But let me know what you guys think about this build. What do you think about the redstone lamps as windows? And also, what do you think about the crossbar? I kind of like it. I think that it's a different way to add some depth to a flat surface. But hey, that's going to be where I wrap up for today's episode. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on the video, as well as if you're new around here and you want to keep up with this series, 
be sure to subscribe. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. You guys have a great day.